Welcome back, heroes. In part 3 of our thrilling saga, imagine a twist where Deku is rescued by six mysterious widows from the future. Join us as we unravel the mysteries and explore the unforeseen consequences in this riveting installment. Even though Momo, Kyoka, Suyu, Mina, Setsuna, and Reiko had warned about the villain's attack at the Pussycats training camp, they didn't know what would happen. When Izuku and Reiko entered the battlefield, All Might immediately attacked them with a powerful gust of wind. Izuku raised his arms and unleashed the most powerful repulsion wave he could, destroying or at least scratching some buildings, shattering glass, and leaving curious marks on the ground. Reiko opened her eyes as soon as All Might's attack ended and quickly shut them again, feeling everyday objects in the buildings or nearby. But of course, she was the professional hero heroic phantom, Emily. She placed her hands on the ground and cracked it, causing asphalt fragments of various sizes, but weighing as much as an average person, to fly towards All Might, who was approaching them. Izuku threw two consecutive repulsion attacks to halt All Might's advance and propel the ground fragments. Seeing Agent Grin approaching him and fully aware of the vampire, All Might began to retreat and tried to unleash shockwaves. But Agent Grin used the whip to tether himself to All Might's arms and get close to him, intending to use the vampire, only to be struck by a wooden beam on the back and crushed by a repulsion blow from the front. All Might punched the sky, sending his opponents flying. Emily raised her hands and, sensing many objects with the weight of average people in that fake city, used them to attack All Might, putting him in difficulties. Meanwhile, Agent Grin hurled repulsion attacks one after another at the hero, allowing him to approach and, with a war cry, began hitting him with the vampire, causing fatigue with each blow Midoriya Shonen landed on his torso, not to mention the blows he received from Emily. Seeing this, Emily began to run towards the exit. But All Might punched the sky, clearing the clouds and sending Agent Grin flying. You won't make it. He grunted, then turned. Kuroi Muchi and Atraxion at the same time, Midoriya Shonen? He said amazed. He has fantastic control over his kosais, he definitely deserves to go to the training camp, thought the hero as he jumped and pulled Izuku towards him, delivering a powerful blow that sent him flying. He turned but didn't see his other student. She's small in stature and very agile. Surely something like this could have happened if Kyoka Shoujo or Uraka Shoujo were on her team. At that moment, he received an old TV set to the cheek, sending him flying, and then he soared into the air. It's not just Midoriya Shonen. The Kosei, poltergeist, of Yanagi Shoujo, allows him to move anything that weighs like a person, and I am a person. Izuku assisted Reiko, and All Might almost flew out of the exam field. Wow, those two are amazing. I'm glad to be their teacher, he exclaimed, jumping to try to catch them, but they managed to pass through the other door, with Reiko hanging from Izuku's neck, while he swung between the buildings with Kuroi Muchi. As for Mina, Denki, Rikido, and Eijiro, they were discouraged, the four of them had neither escaped nor captured their rival. Mina and Denki fought against the director, who had once been a lab rat and still harbored some hatred towards humans. He made them fight in a city full of giant tubes and metal and cement cubes, forcing them to escape until they were terrified and surrendered. As for Rikido and Eijiro, they fought against Cementos, breaking through wall after wall until they were exhausted. We'll wait to hear your stories about the camp, Mina said tearfully. D don't worry, Izuku said nervously. Th there's. Probably. Some kind of last minute twist. Those who fail the exam don't deserve to go to the forest cabin, Denki said, poking fun. If you don't get that, then you're dumber than monkeys. The door swung open. Even though they knew it was Aizawa, it opened so forcefully that it echoed, scaring them all. When the bell rings, everyone should be seated. Hate to break it to you, but some of you failed your end of term exams and such. So, Ashido, Kaminari, Sato, and Kirishima, along with those who failed from class 1b, will be in remedial classes, which we've prepared with a psychologically conditioned room, in the right colors, to make it the most boring place on the planet. None of you failed the written exam, and yet you four will be in remedial classes for failing the practical exam. The camp will be to reinforce and thoroughly train your quirks, to know the limits of your bodies and quirks, thus reinforcing them. With the time we have left after those trainings, you'll begin to work on your special moves. Understood? We get to go to camp, exclaimed the four who failed. I still can't believe I failed again, thought Inermina, looking depressed, appearing like a 26-year-old girl. Kyoka approached Momo. Uraka told me, during our mission in Abafaru, when we went to capture Pisicotic Dandy, that Shigaraki Tomura appeared at the mall and captured Izuku, Momo covered her mouth to stifle a gasp. Immediately, she alerted the other four Midoriya widows. 
Setsuna, in class 1b, quickly mobilized and asked her friend Rin, who was of Chinese descent and not the only foreigner in the class, as Pony had an American father but used her Japanese mother's surname, for some old parchment, Chinese ink, and a brush. She would write a warning and then began to think about how to get it to the principal. Then, it was Reiko who took the note, rolled it around a ringlet, left the classroom, exited the building, climbed a tree, and threw the ringlet with the note straight to the director's back wall. Lucky the principal had the window open, thought the ghost girl to herself as she climbed down from the tree and returned to class. Nezu looked at the ringlet, turned his head back, but saw no one. He approached and grabbed the note. You're here again, huh? He said to the air as he pulled out a cell phone from his office suit and dialed a number. Hello, Ragdoll, it's Nezu. We have a problem, I have a heroine from the future sending me warnings when things are about to happen. At the same time, in the mega shopping center in District Kiyashi, Izuku, Mezo, Mashirao, Fumikage, Momo, Mina, Kyoka, Suyu, Setsuna, Reiko, Yanetsu, Tetsu Tetsu, Yui, Pony, Kosei, Hiryu, and Kanoko were present. It's the shopping center with the most stores in the prefecture, catering to the current youth, exclaimed an excited Mina. The shopping center of District Kiyashi. A vendor, upon seeing UA students, started calling out to them. We have the kind of clothes you need, six armed people. And you, young man with big calves, he said to Ida. Momo wrote to Setsuna and Suyu to stay with Izuku as bodyguards in case he showed up. Seeing as we all need different things, new shoes, flashlights, and those things, Eijiro said. Why not meet at the fountain in half an hour? Am I alone? Izuku wondered as he saw everyone going in different directions. Oh, but if it isn't the amazing UA boy, someone said behind him, slinging an arm over his shoulder. The one with multiple quirks, right? Strikes that cause fatigue, bringing close and pushing away. Those things that let you swing. Yes, you were in the middle of the monster attack in Hasu. Perhaps it's fate. But Suyu appeared behind him, holding him by the shoulders and speaking to him, while Setsuna placed a floating hand, wielding a scalpel, against the villain's neck. The same fate that has you one measly pressure of this scalpel away from bleeding out on the ground before anyone can notice, Shimura Tenko, said Suyu, the villain glanced sideways at the girls behind him, wondering how they knew all that. So give us both a good reason for you not to bleed out right here and for all for one not to have to appoint Dobby as the new leader of the League of Villains. We don't like seeing you getting too confident with our husband, Setsuna said, causing Izuku to blush at the green-haired girl's term, while being released by the villain. If you don't let go right now, the new face of the League will be Todoroki Toya. So, that's Dobby's real name, huh? Growled Tenko, pondering one of the two boys he had just met recently, the black-haired boy with blue eyes and those patches of skin, stapled, dressed in that black trench coat, white shirt, and black pants, not to mention the blonde girl with badly placed buns and dressed as a schoolgirl, he's Endeavor's son, like Shoto, right? But this raises a question, how do you know my real name? His nervous tick appeared, he wanted to scratch his neck due to the anger of being discovered and that these two knew his name. That's not important, Ribbit, said Suyu, stretching her tongue, tying it around Izuku's waist, and pulling him close. What's important is for you to tell us what all for one and you are after. Both from us, UA, and from our husband, Ribbit. Seeing that they had him cornered, he decided to speak up, feeling the razor's edge increase against his neck and even believed he felt the blood starting to flow. So, he decided to be honest with his enemies. There's an ice cream shop, and the four of us will eat, Suyu warned, the two men obeyed, both out of fear. Yue is the largest and most prestigious hero school in the country and has trained several of the present greats, All Might, Endeavor, Bestionist, Shimura Tenko began, with no other options, as they waited in line. That's why we want to destroy you, you are the future of heroes. What do you want? Izuku asked when their turn came in line. I'll have a cold vanilla cream ice cream with brownie chunks. A scoop of bubblegum ice cream in a small cup, said the captive villain. How the hell did I end up being the hostage of these brats? This is humiliating. Setsuna took over, a side of mocha for me and one of strawberry for Tsuyu-chan. The frog girl nodded, and Izuku ordered everything. They sat at a table and began to eat their respective ice creams. When? All for one found me, it was in an alley, and no one else had helped me. They saw a child with a gaunt face and ran away, growled the villain, when I touch anything with my five fingers, I disintegrate it. Everyday objects, from paper sheets, plants, metal. Animals, people. My father is. Was. 
he bit his tongue he was the son of a prestigious heroine from the time before All Might. Shimura Nana, avoid lying, said Suyu, frowning, while sending an alert message to her friends using the GPS on her cell phone so they would know where to find them. The villain was irritated. Very irritated, these brats clearly knew everything. She died, and my father believed she had preferred to be a hero and die as one rather than be my mother. He was very young back then. But that twisted his mind, you know? When he was an adult, he brought my maternal grandparents to live with us, my maternal grandparents, my mother, Hanane, and I lived in a home where heroes couldn't be talked about, and my father used to hurt Hanane and me. That stressed me out, and the first thing I decayed was our pet dog, then it was Hana, then my mother hugged me, trying to calm me down, and we know what happened next. The floor was next, and my grandparents with it. Then, my father appeared. He had a stick, he hit me, and I attacked him with the intention of killing him. I spent several days on the streets, and he appeared and saved me. I then became his adopted son, Shigaraki Tomura. And we formed the League of Villains and I don't. Get it? The invasion at UA and then the Nomus in Hasu, but it's all been overshadowed by that bastard. Why doesn't anyone look at me? I don't know why we should help a villain, said Setsuna, feigning disinterest but more than ready to open his neck. Do you see the hero accessories store back there? Shigaraki looked beyond her, there are kids and heroes watching as Stain's masks are being sold. Why? Because despite being a villain, you can empathize with his ideology. And what's yours? Izuku asked rhetorically, now feeling more courageous, while he saw Momo, Jiro, Mina, and Reiko approaching, with bags of their purchases, killing the symbol of peace, no one would empathize with you. Neither heroes nor villains. And no one knew that the Nomas were sent by the League of Villains. If you want to give your group another face, change your goal. Shigaraki walked away just as they called the police. Kyoka and Momo talked to the police and the arriving heroes when they reported the almost attack on Izuku. This guy's name is Shimura Tenko, but he goes by Shigaraki Tomura. When he touches anything with his five fingers, be it an animal or a person, he disintegrates everything. We faced him at USJ. And they say he's the leader of the League of Villains? Detective Naomasa asked. From what he said, it seems he's not the leader, but there's someone else above him who directs the League of Villains, Izuku was confused. He didn't understand why his friends were making him lie to the police, but disrespecting authority was better than facing a woman's wrath. The shopping center closed temporarily, and as soon as UA found out, they spoke with the authorities about where they would stay, which they were informed of upon arriving in the classroom. After the attack on Midoriya by this villain, whose real name has been revealed as Shimura Tenko, the location of the camp will be changed, Aizawa said, tearing up the sheet in his hands. But I had already told my parents. Hanta complained. We will change the location, not cancel it, Aizawa repeated. If you plan to bring camping tents, then don't. But if you have sleeping bags, bring them. Basically, the academy can't control how and where the information will spread, Momo said. We're lucky the trip isn't cancelled, Shoji said. I'll be honest with you, Aizawa said. We believe there's an infiltrator from the League of Villains within the academy. First the attack at USJ, and now here, in a public place. Keep your eyes open and report anything suspicious. Maybe you should have punched that jerk in the face, then you'd have a reason to wear that hand mask, Todoroki's words were polite but firm. Oh come on, Todoroki, Hagakure said, slightly shocked. Didn't you hear the part about him having four of his fingers on him? One more and Midoriya wouldn't be here. And you know very well that using Kosai's is prohibited unless you have a hero license, and that's in the second year. You're thinking I simply don't care about Midoriya's life, Shoto said, crossing his arms. But you're wrong. I just think I could have stopped him somehow so they could arrest Shigaraki. A couple more days passed until classes 1A and 1B gathered for a moment before boarding their buses. Everyone talked, played, ate, listened to music. The bus will stop in an hour, and after that, we'll start the first phase of training. After another hour, they got off the bus, but only class 1A, and before them, a blonde woman in a blue and white band suit, and another with short salmon and white hair. I would like to introduce you to members Mandalay and Ragdoll of the Pussycats team. It's a pleasure to meet you, said all the students of class 1A. Let's start with the training then, said the blonde cat. You must reach that cabin over there, deep in the forest. Why did we stop here then? Uraka asked confusedly. Don't tell me. Began a nervous Rikido, as everyone headed towards the bus, but Ragdoll was faster and sent them all flying with an avalanche. Momo distributed Delta wings, hoping some would catch them. 
Izuku used his black whip to catch several classmates and then swung carefully towards some trees, landing on his feet. Todoroki, showing his affection, carried Uraka in his arms and helped her descend with an ice ramp. Mina took one of the delta wings, while Tsuyu took advantage of the avalanche to jump and swing on a tree branch, continuing her path, swinging on them like trapezes. Hanta used his cellophane to swing through the trees. Tokoyami used dark shadow to do exactly what Hanta did. Todoroki and Uraka used the zero gravity from the chestnut to run faster, Aoyama, Toru, Kirishima, Koji, Rikido, Momo, and Tenya ran at ground level, only to see earth and stone beasts appear. Koji tried to calm the creature but was hit. Immediately, Tenya intercepted it. Todoroki froze it, and then Uraka made it float. Seeing two more beasts coming towards her, she threw the one she already had in the air. Tenya ran and delivered a powerful kick to another creature, turning it into a few pieces of stone. Kyoka sent her sound waves, pulverizing several of the stone beasts. Mina threw her acid, followed by several pellets from Momo's newly created shotgun, putting an end to the creature. Eijiro and Rikido used their hardening and sugar rush to pass through the monsters. Tsuyu used her kicks, which were up to 50% more powerful than those of a normal human, and thus destroyed the creatures. Finally, when they reached the cabin, the pussy cats awaited them with plenty of food, but warned them that the next day they would have to cook, and the training would begin the day after. The League of Villains spy began writing to them and sending them coordinates, only to be hit on the head with a wooden bat, while four young future heroines looked at the person on the ground. All the students were awake and dressed in their physical education uniforms, but they were in a very bad mood and still sleepy. It's 5.30 a.m., I forgot about this time, said Kyoka, trying to shake off her sleepiness as she stretched. You can say that again, yawned Suyu and Mina. Momo didn't say anything as she drank a very large cup of strong, sugarless coffee, grimacing at how bitter it was. She was the one who rested the least last night. I sneaked out at night, ate as many fruits as I could, and created sensors in case someone approaches, so we'll know, the other three girls nodded. Today we will begin a rigorous round of training, said Aizawa to his students, all of them drowsy and some with bed hair. The real reason for this trip is to strengthen your quirks as much as possible, thereby obtaining your temporary licenses. This is preparation to face real hostile actions and aggressions from your enemies. So, prepare your minds and hearts. That being said. He threw something to Izuku, who caught it. It was a modified softball, throw this, Midoriya. The physical strength test? Asked Rikido, confused. Midoriya's throw was 705 meters, said Aizawa. Let's see how much you've improved since your admission. At least a kilometer, exclaimed Hanta, as everyone watched Izuku walk to the front and throw the ball with repulsion. Aizawa's cell phone app for measuring softball speed sounded, and he showed it to everyone. 709.5 meters. Why? Because so far, you've improved mentally and gained experience over these three months. Mental, emotional, and technical growth. So here, at this training camp, you will demonstrate your physical growth. Your quirks have improved by a marginal amount. From today, we will focus on improving your quirks and your growth. I'll push you beyond your limits, remember, if it doesn't hurt, then it's not worth it. Don't disappoint me. A few minutes later, everyone was doing different exercises. Even class 1b. Ochako lifted a very large stone with her zero gravity quirk. The girl sighed when she found a cube made of dense and heavy material, created by Momo for her. I'll have to thank her later, and she began to try to lift it off the ground. Tokoyami was inside a dark cave, battling control against dark shadow. Suyu was climbing a wall again, using her tongue for assistance, while wearing 10 kilo wrist and ankle weights. Tenya had 20 kilo ankle weights while running. Momo and Rikido were eating a lot. Momo ate large amounts of food again while creating things almost at random. Izuku divided his training into gathering energy from the forest animals, entering a frenzy where he needed to stay sane, not much different from Rikido when he ate too many sweets. He swung between trees with Kuroi Muchi, searching for an object as heavy and dense as what Momo created for Ochako, and when he found it, he pushed it with repulsion and then had to bring it closer with attraction without letting it fall to the ground. Kyoka now not only buried her plugs in the mountain rock but also in a metal plate created by Momo. Mina secreted acid constantly to make it even more corrosive and to toughen her skin. Eijiro jumped from very high places. Kota did vocal exercises or simply shouted to call the animals, and it was an excellent method for him to overcome his shyness. Todoroki got into a tub where he froze the water and then heated it to the maximum. Eventually, 
he could use his quirks at the same time, regulating his temperature. Hagakure did stealth exercises with Shoji who tried to find her while attempting to figure out who knocked her unconscious. When she woke up, she was in her room with a note, We know you're working with the League, avoid doing anything stupid, we're watching you. Shoji transformed his six hands into eyes, ears, and noses, trying to find Hagakure by sound, shadow vision, or smell. Hanta released insane amounts of his tape, causing him a lot of pain. But he knew he had to continue. Aoyama released his laser, trying to last longer despite the pain and suffering. Dot. When night fell, the students cooked their own dinner, and after that, Mandalay went to explain what was next. You will be divided into pairs between the classes, and one group from either class A or B will have to scare the other class, for example, class B, the scaremongers, will venture into the forest and must. The leader of the pussy cats paused when she saw the young man with red and white hair near one of her teammates. What are you doing, Todoroki-san? They said it's partner training, and Uraka-san and I said we'd train together earlier, right? Uraka blushed. It was definitive and obvious to her, Todoroki liked her. Yes. Why yes, we did, seeing him blush and smile victoriously was a new experience for the brown-haired girl. She didn't know what was driving Todoroki so much to be by her side, but she did know that it all started at the sports festival, and she wanted to see how many times she could make the two-toned haired boy smile. Mandalay cleared her throat and regained her composure. As I was saying, the path is marked, so it's impossible to get lost. Halfway down the trail, you'll find a letter. Bring it back as proof that you completed the course. A darkness party, I like it, said Tokoyami. He said it again. Uraka thought. The scaremonger group is prohibited from directly touching anyone, Mandalay added. But in fear tactics, make use of your quirks. A siren began to sound, and a recording of Momo's voice played from the speakers. The villains have entered the area, everyone gather at one point and avoid splitting up. It's not possible. Mineta screamed in terror, pulling his eyelids down. The blue fire burned half the forest, and the other half began to fill with smoke. Seeing the smoke getting closer to them, Kendo enlarged her hands and clapped loudly, temporarily dispersing the smoke. Everyone, run to the cabin. Mandalay ordered. And be ready in case we need to fight. The students did as instructed and prepared in case they needed to fight, while the six future girls wondered who else could have given the warning if Hagakure was out of the question. But one thing was true, they would prevent a possible kidnapping. That's what heroes did. Reiko closed her eyes and tried to sense them. She tried to feel the presences in the forest. Being an adult in a teenage body was tough. She looked at Setsuna and conveyed it to her without even opening her mouth, she would faint. She sensed all of them in the forest and drew them toward them. Emerging from the forest, nine people appeared, who were pulled by, what they thought was, telekinesis, ruining the element of surprise, in addition to that horn. In front and standing out, there was a man with tousled black hair, with several patches of burned skin held together with medical staples, and his white hair dyed black. He was dressed in a white round neck shirt along with a long dark blue jacket and matching ankle-length pants and normal shoes. To his left, a girl. The only girl in the group. She was relatively small, with fair skin, and a pretty face. She had slightly inward slanting eyes, bright yellow iris, and thin pupils, making them look a bit like a cat's, and her wide mouth was also quite feline, as her upper and lower canines were sharper and longer than the rest of her teeth. Her hair was pale ash blonde and styled into two messy buns with numerous strands sticking out in all angles from their centers and where they're secured, a straight fringe, and two side bangs down to her chin to frame her face. She was dressed like a schoolgirl, wearing a strange scarf. She carried boxes of knives strapped around her thighs and a blue belt around her waist with more small green boxes attached on both sides. She wore a loose black mask around her neck, decorated with pale metal pieces in the shape of a carnivorous smile. Three large silver containers were attached to the sides of her mask, needles protruding from their tips and connecting their bases, which then connected to the two larger cylinders tied to the back of her belt. To his right, a man who wore a full-body black suit, his mask was black, with the top grey and the eye sockets white, a grey Y on the torso, red and green bracelets where he stored his measuring tapes. To the right of the man in the black suit, there was a person with a muscular build, long dark red hair and fine facial hair around his chin, large oval eyes, and big lips. In reality, it was a woman with the magnetism quirk. To the left of the blonde girl, a tall, slim man, who wore a dark orange shirt with the collar turned up and a green striped bolo tie with a blue oval-shaped brooch hanging around his neck, a black vest and black dress pants. 
he wore knee-high white boots with wedge heels and black toe caps, smooth dark red gloves, and a tall brown top hat, a red ribbon tied around it with a pale feather sticking out from the left side. Over his face, a white mask with a black geometric design. Then, a rather tall man, taller than the members of the villains. His entire body was covered with a sort of leather straitjacket, with his arms crossed over his chest in an X shape, and almost his entire face covered except his mouth, which was held open by metal clamps, which were tied to five straps, and these tied to several more straps along his body, these straps were black, with red spikes at evenly spaced intervals. Underneath the set of straps, there was nothing more than the usual straitjacket. Dot. The one with black hair and patches on his face growled and began to look at the UA students. How the hell did they know we would be here? He extended his right hand. Todoroki, use your ice. Ordered Momo. Without questioning her, Shoto erected a tall and wide ice wall, as his opponent released blue flames, quickly creating a wave. Shoto Todoroki, meet Toya Todoroki, your older brother. His body is your mother's, for using ice, not fire. Dobby narrowed his eyes. How do you know that? The man in the black suit raised his head, as if trying to look at the sky, and his teeth transformed into blades, elongating toward the young ones. But Shoto's ice took a moment to be broken, and immediately after, that man was pushed by Izuku. Uraka ran towards her boyfriend's brother, who was pushed by Kyoka's sound waves, and Himiko approached him, holding a knife, but she was grateful for the classes with Gunhead, dodging several times Himiko's attempts to stab her and managed to land a strong punch on her cheek, snatched the knife and her other attachments, throwing them away, before tying her hands with her own sweater. Shoto couldn't help but smile. Great job, sweetheart. Ochako blushed, but accepted her boyfriend's compliment. Dabi, or rather Toya, threw his blue flames, only to have his hands tied by Izuku's Kuroi Muchi and Mina threw acid at his chest, sending him backwards, taking painful steps and screaming in pain. Shoto began to create ice around Toya, while Izuku used vampire, leaving him unconscious. Three clones of twice started to surround them, but Mina took care of the clones quickly, bathing them in acid. Setsuna divided her body and attacked the green-helmeted man from 35 flanks, preventing him from using his quirk. Knowing that the most dangerous one was the one with the green helmet, who Setsuna was attacking due to his violet smoke, Momo generated a staff and a katana, rushing at him and being quickly overwhelmed and stabbed, ending up on the ground. As for that villain capable of magnetizing, well, he didn't have it easy at all, being in a mano a mano fight against Tiger, the only male member of the wild wild pussycats, who blocked him every time he thought he saw an advantage. Forget it, Tiger. You don't stand a chance. Is he reading my cat fighting movements? Tiger wondered, attacking without stopping, but all his blows hit his opponent's hands. Tiger was supported by Eijiro to attack Magna. Rikido, Kendo, and Tetsu Tetsu faced twice again, who kept getting up. But the three of them dodged the well-dressed villain, who trapped twice in a marble. Do not release the cloner, yelled Tetsu Tetsu, throwing himself at the well-dressed villain. Rikido consumed more sweets and Kendo stood by the muscular brown-haired boy. Understood we have to beat him up before he manages to use his quirk and release him. Damn it, Mr. Compress thought angrily, beginning to dodge the three boys, who coordinated excellently, preventing him from attacking or counterattacking them, stepping back at all times. From the shadows, Kuro Iro and Dark Shadow emerged, attacking him from behind. Kuro Iro attacked when Dark Shadow distracted Mr. Compress, and then was attacked by Rikido, Tetsu Tetsu, and Kendo, preventing him from compressing or attacking them in any way until he received two strong blows from rock, Ajiro, and steel, falling to the ground. At first, there was a nervous laughter, which was joined by others. Soon, the students cheered with excitement for defeating all the villains who showed up. Hanta tied up all the villains with his tape, immobilizing their arms, fingers, and legs separately. Shoto agreed with his friend's idea and froze each villain's fingers, then encased them in large blocks of ice. Mandalay called the police as soon as possible and gave them their location. Calling the police also attracted the press, with that crazy and persistent reporter with multiple microphones who would cover the news. Upon this, Shigaraki Tomura caused his coffee cup to decay, burning himself in the process. But if All Might isn't there, then the pussycats are stronger than expected. Or maybe, they're all just idiots if a bunch of kids defeated them, he remembered what happened during the USJ and how well the UA kids fought along with the incident with the Nomus and the hero killer in Hasu. He looked at some photos of the kids that caught his attention. The ones that irritated him the most, his spy gave him their hero names. Damn. Cursed B. Creaty, Froppy, 
Resolute Hearphone, Pinky, Lizard, Emily, and Agent Grin. The training of the young ones resumed, now not only with Mandalay, Ragdoll, Pixie Bob, Tiger, Eraser Head, and Vlad King, but also with All Might, Endeavor, and Bestianist, who joined the training site to protect it and assist with the training, which lasted the whole summer, even with the incident. All the students learned hand-to-hand -hand combat and control over their quirks, improving their physical strength, endurance, flexibility, and speed. With these improvements, they began to have flashes or plans for their special moves, and with this on the table, they returned to Musatafu. It was known that Hagakure Toru was the spy of the League of Villains, although this was from the six students of the future, not from the UA teachers, inside UA. The girls from the future shared Hagakure's story and why she did it on all social media platforms. She discovered it in the middle of the night, checking her phone like any other teenager, and when she tried to escape through the door, a bright light blinded her, and she felt a second blow to her head, losing consciousness again. In the middle of the night, Hagakure's parents were arrested, and reporters filmed as Hagakure Toru was also arrested. The girl was thankful for being invisible, as she couldn't bear her own shame. She decided to tell everything in the interrogations and why she did it. She gave them all the information she had about the League of Villains. She wouldn't leave prison, but she would clear her conscience. Thanks to that, All Might, Endeavor, Snipe, and Gunhead would head to the place where, thanks to Hawks, they could confirm that the largest Nomu laboratory was located, breaking in and starting the destruction of the League of Villains soldiers. Soon, Gang Orca, Bestianist, Mount Lady, and Edgeshot were far from there, dealing with the villains in the bar. The few who were there, along with Shigaraki Tomura. All Might saw someone emerge from the shadows, and while Endeavor, Snipe, and Gunhead believed it was just a civilian, All Might attacked him head-on, releasing a great pressure of air. I'll make you pay for everything, all for one. The blonde hero growled furiously. I see you've weakened, All Might, all for one replied calmly, stopping him with his bare hands before releasing a huge amount of air pressure with his quirk, maybe it was a tornado quirk, sending the other heroes and the gnomus flying. All Might spun around and threw a punch at all for one. Oklahoma smash. The air pressure sent everyone flying again, but his enemy grabbed him by one hand and then sent him flying. Atmospheric compression plus air cannon plus impulse. Easy to use and combine, said all for one calmly. Let's see how you combine this. All Might shouted, flying and throwing another punch. The hero's punch against the villain's palm resonated in the place. Impact absorption. You learned it from your fight against the Nomu at the USJ attack, didn't you? All for one asked calmly before receiving a blow from someone else and then a direct hit from All Might before focusing his gaze, seeing an old man in white clothes, gloves, boots, and a yellow cape. Shimura's friend. You're very fast, complained the old man. Sorry said All Might, noticing that All for One was forming a sphere of some translucent substance behind him. Detroit Smash. You denied it just with your strength, huh? Muttered All for One before flying away and feeling four blows to his abdomen. Was that? Punches with air pressure? Similar to the gear shift of the second user of your quirk. That guy wasn't a bother, but that fighting style was irritating. So many heroes here, so many civilians, he began to mock, so many things to protect, he shouted when something hit him. From a very distant building, Midori Yamomo smiled, putting aside her sniper rifle after damaging her target. She only had one bullet and was grateful to have hit that annoying all for one directly. A bullet that explodes inside the person who receives the shot and releases sound waves. It was a good invention. We've created many interesting things over the years, haven't we, Melissa San? Shut up, that's exactly how you play with people. All Might shouted furiously, dodging a punch from all for one grabbing his arm. You corrupt them, you rob them, you just play with them. Followed by punching him in the face. I'll put you behind bars, although you'd be better off dead. Aren't you getting a little carried away by your emotions? All for one asked calmly. Do you know? I've heard those words before, to whom did they belong? Oh yes, Shimura Nana. Shut up, shouted All Might, throwing another punch at his face, but all for one sent him flying with air cannon. I killed her, all for one rejoiced, paying little attention to the bullet lodged in his body, thinking it was some useless police or army agent. If not, then where is she now that her beloved student needs her so much? The trust in heroes that Tomura has been busy destroying, I guess it's up to me to put the final nail in the coffin. He vomited inside his mask. What? All for one began to receive a savage barrage of punches, in which all might put all his strength into, until he managed to make the villain scream in pain, 
ending his combo with a suplex. That. That hurt. Curse it. It hurt. His right arm became wider, until it tore his shirt apart, revealing an abnormally large arm, long screws, and red lights. I think we've played enough, and it's the perfect time to end. Nezu met with only three teachers from his academy, Izawa, Vlad King, and All Might. The current situation, after the attack on the summer camp and your fight against your number one enemy, is calling into question everything UA is achieving in its role to educate the next generation of heroes. As for what we'll do now, it might seem a bit drastic, but it'll be best for our students, he passed them three documents detailing the transition of the academy into becoming UA boarding school, aiming to protect the students. Izawa and All Might arrived at the Jiro household, as if fate wished to ease, or perhaps complicate, things for them, stumbling upon a curious parents' gathering, which would save them a lot of trouble, the Gyros, the Midoriyas, the Asuas, the Yarrosas, the Tokages, and the Anagis were gathered in the Jiro's backyard, preparing a barbecue. It turns out there was a league of villains infiltrator among the hero department students all this time, explained All Might. Oh, yes, said Momo's mother stroking her daughter's cheek. Momo-chan told us how she was fixing her cell phone and accidentally hacked into her friend's phone network, discovering messages from a classmate with the League of Villains. Exactly, said All Might, deciding he would be the one to explain what would come in their classes. There are people who leave their lives as heroes behind for various personal reasons, and many of them are UA alumni who will be part of the security rings. Cementos has built the new dormitories for the students a five-minute walk from the educational building, said Izawa they'll be called United Alliance. Two days later. I'm glad to see you again, kids, said Izawa. We're glad to see you again, Izawa sensei they all said, smiling and very happy to start a new chapter in their lives. I had a lot of trouble, but I'm glad to be back here, said Mina, smiling. The old man had a hard time accepting that I should come back after the camp danger and insists on joining us on the next outing, said Shoto, still surprised to have heard his father say those words. Concerned for him. Well, I'm really glad you could come, Shoto-kun, said Ochako, smiling brightly. They hired my parents to build the dormitories. So, we've got a much-needed injection of money. The kitchen, dining room, and laundry are on the first floor, said Izawa when they entered. The second to fourth floors are the dormitories, and we've assigned rooms. On each floor, there are four rooms, boys on the right and girls on the left. You'll find your belongings in your private rooms, air conditioning unit, balcony, bathroom, refrigerator, and wardrobe. For now, unpack, decorate your rooms. Tomorrow we'll return to regular classes and something very important in Hero Basic Studies class. Everyone unpacked and decorated their rooms according to their personal tastes. When Izuku finished his room, he noticed a shiny paper at his door's feet. That's odd. This doesn't seem to be mine, he picked up the paper and turned it over, reading, please, meet us at midnight in the lounge, he opened the door. But who? He looked around, finding no one in the hallway. At midnight, Izuku went to the lounge, finding Yaoyorozu, Jiro, Suyu, Ashido, Tokage, Yanagi? He asked confused. Please take a seat, Midoriya kun, we have something very important to tell you, Reiko asked politely, handing him a cup of green tea, without her lock over the left eye hindering depth perception. The six girls told him things that would happen in the near future, and he would have to decide whether to believe them or not but he would see that the next day if they were right or wrong. In the class the next day, during Hero Basic Studies. First of all, welcome, class 2B, said Izawa, while everyone celebrated passing to the second year. As I told you yesterday, our goal will be for you to get your provisional hero licenses. Yes, sir. At the camp, you managed to strengthen your quirks and recognize your own limits, continued Izawa. Thanks to these licenses, you'll be able to legally and directly intervene when you see people's lives in danger or encounter injustice. This designation carries a huge weight because it's when things take on a real scale, when you understand that now the lives of civilians, other heroes, and even villains are in your hands. The average passing rate of the provisional license exam each year is less than 5%. And that's why from today and for the next two weeks, you'll focus on developing at least two. The door opened, and Midnight came in and finished her sensei's sentence, special moves, followed by Cementos and Ectoplasm. Cementos spoke. The special move is every hero's ultimate technique. The move that will grant you absolute victory. You must explore who you are personally and what your quirks can and cannot achieve, working within your parameters and limitations, both physical and mental, and the limits of your quirks. Ectoplasm added, 
heroes without special moves are extremely rare and an endangered species. With that said, follow us to Gamma Jim, said Aizawa. You must think about this while developing your special moves, there are all kinds of natural disasters, terrorist attacks, and accidents in everyday life. Gathering information, assessing the situation, mobility in different terrains, fighting skills, communication skills, and charisma. These are the six points that every hero should consciously work on in their daily lives, said Midnight. And fighting ability is considered one of the main ones. It's one of the most severely judged things in the provisional license exam. Not all special moves have to be offensive, said Ectoplasm. Let me remind you of Ida's super speed movement or Jiro's sound wave shield. One of Kamui Wood's most recognized moves is, Lacquered Wooden Prison, and it's a capture move, not a combat one, Midnight exemplified. It's time to get creative. It's time to push the limits of your quirks and rediscover what your bodies can do. Cementos created several platforms, and Ectoplasm created many clones, one for each platform. Izawa spoke. Be confident in every movement of your bodies, don't overthink them, they should come out naturally. We have two weeks, after all. Izawa, Midnight, Cementos, and Ectoplasm were gathered, watching over their students as they trained in Gamma Gym, trying to discover possible special moves. High or low platforms, created by Cementos, where Ectoplasm's clones sparred with the students and gave them advice. Furthermore, with the nature of special moves and your quirks, look for ways in which your hero costumes can be improved, said Aizawa. Let the spirit of Plus Ultra take you to new heights. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Chorus their students. Ectoplasm dodged every swipe from Masharao, delivering a series of strong kicks until he was on the ground. Your moves say, I move like this because I have a tail. You need to think outside the box. Yes, Ectoplasm Sensei, Masharao said, getting up. In other words, very normal for me, he thought, somewhat annoyed. Mina demonstrated her acid shot and acid veil to Ectoplasm Sensei, who gave her some advice, and thanks to her experience as a professional hero, she followed them to the letter. Momo wasn't so much about creating special moves as combat strategies, like the sunlight shield she projected in the fight against Dark Shadow, creating weaponry in minutes with creation, and more. Because of this, she was creating quite a few weapons, like glue, sticky nets, a kind of portable quicksand, a retractable shield, hook triggers for swinging, among other weapons. Combining the gunhead martial arts she learned from the hero with her quirk, Ochako could devise a super move to defeat her opponents. She would first run towards her opponent to touch them and activate zero gravity to make them float, then grab them by the arm and throw them to the ground with a circular motion. Ochako learned not only to remove gravity, or put things in zero gravity, but also to add that gravity, doing so in her fists, achieving artificial super strength. Ajiro had a very good idea of what he wanted to achieve and put it into practice, red counter, while hardened, Ajiro withstands a close range attack with his skin and then counterattacks with a direct blow. Red Riot Unbreakable, Ajiro reaches his maximum level of hardening by making his entire body extremely tough and resistant, leaving him with a monstrous appearance and practically invulnerable to most forms of attack. This form can only be maintained for about 30 to 40 seconds. Red Gauntlet, Ajiro rushes towards the enemy and delivers a strong punch to the gut against them. He learned that if used during Red Riot Unbreakable, it causes massive damage. Tokoyami advanced just as the girls remembered him. Black Onk, Fumikage uses Dark Shadow to cover his body, protecting the upper half of his owner and acting as armor, thus compensating for Fumikage's weakness when fighting at close range. Suyu could only see him using it once, but she told Fumikage what she remembered, pretending it was in a dream. And so, Class 1A's Karasu Tengu developed his Kuro no Datenshi, Fallen Black Angel, much earlier than expected. And speaking of Tsuyu, she altered her body temperature and color to camouflage herself in the environment she was in, in order to move stealthily. She demonstrated a huge repertoire in her martial arts, astonishing Ectoplasm, who had to create a new clone for her on three occasions. Izuku further developed Shinra Tensei, Repulsion, and Banshu Tenen, Attraction. He further developed Empire Battlering Ram, a super punch, hitting with all his wake energy, seriously injuring his sensei's clone. And the Black Mummy, tying Kuroi Muchi around the opponent and well, he could take advantage to hit or use Shinra Tensei. Kyoka repeated her repertoire of special moves, seeking to evolve them or improve them. Heartbeat Wall, aiming at her opponent with her connectors, she releases powerful sound waves that create sonic walls that she uses to try to trap her opponent. Counterbalance, 
Her second move involved amplifying her power while releasing powerful sound waves that cancel out other types of sounds. Heartbeat fuzz, by plugging her headphone connectors into her forearm amplifiers, Kyoka releases sonic waves on anything she touches. The waves produced are strong enough to break the ground. Heartbeat surround, Kyoka connects her two headphone connectors into her forearm amplifiers and removes them to aim the amplifiers at her opponent, thus launching super powerful sound waves that destroy any conventional defense and stun the opponent. After Class 1A finished, Class 1B followed. Knowing that the two girls were in love with him, Izuku stayed to see Reiko and Setsuna's progress. Reiko's movement reminded Izuku of a spell from Harry Potter, seeing her throw many objects at ectoplasm, a pugno, and using the objects to reach, literally, new heights, entering against her opponent with fists and kicks. Setsuna's style was as simple as dividing the parts of her body that her opponent wanted to hit, leaving her unscathed and then counterattacking, either in close combat or having all the divided parts attack her opponent. Everyone heard Agent Grin name Lizard's movement, Spectre. In her second move, with the parts of her body surrounding her enemy, it received the same name as Reiko's attack, a pugno de autotomia. When both UA buses stopped, the six widows were surprised, even though they shouldn't have been. It was the same place as last time. Momo was the first to speak. So, both classes will take the exam in the same place at the same time? That seems to be the case, nodded Reiko. Then let the best ones get their provisional licenses, encouraged Setsuna. Both classes nodded and cheered. She sighed and approached Izuku, kissing him on the cheek, causing him to blush. Good luck. Go get it again. The location of the exam, Tacoba National Stadium, said Eraser Head and Vlad King. I'm getting nervous again. Kyoka rubbed her arms to shake off her shiver. Do you think we can do it? asked Mineta, just as nervous as Kyoka and many others. It's not about whether you can or not, Mineta, said Aizawa. Go in there and get the license. A few minutes later, after receiving instructions, they all had to wear something similar to electronic targets on their bodies, and if they hit their four targets, they would be out of the fight. As they left that room, UA students split into groups, and the larger group found themselves facing an event that always took place in this exam. It was almost like a tradition, where all the other academies gathered only to achieve one thing, the crushing of UA, disqualifying UA students. Mina released her acid, Dark Shadow caught several balls, Izuku used Kuroi Muchi, Uraka, as if she were a soccer goalkeeper, touched several balls coming at her, Mina dissolved several with her acid, Mineta formed a chain with the spheres from his head, making the balls stick together, Shoji created hundreds of arms to catch the balls and return the attacks to their enemies. A boy who seemed to be made of blue grabbed four balls in his hands and hardened them, handing them to another teammate. His teammate, with long black hair, dressed in black and wearing a red scarf, closed one eye and threw the balls underground. But this wouldn't stop UA, and Kyoka proved it by placing her forearms on the ground. Heartbeat fuzz. She destroyed the ground with sound waves, and Mina intervened. Acid veil super big. Mina amazed everyone with her speed running around the area, releasing acid and covering everything. Aoyama, who gained the director's trust, told everything he knew and returned as a student of class 1A, he shot his laser at the gathered Shinkitsu students in that place, making them scatter and firing a second time to keep them covered, allowing UA to bombard them with balls. Black Ankh, piercing claw of the dusk. Tokoyami and Dark Shadow, holding six balls, followed several students before throwing them and marking some. A black-haired boy unleashed an earthquake, destroying the ground and sending everyone flying, but between Dark Shadow and Izuku, thanks to his repulsion quirk, attracting his classmates, they caught the UA students, keeping them safe. Hanta and Ochako made a plan, with Ochako attracting them in one direction, touching a stone peak, which she destroyed with her kosei and using the debris to shield herself from the balls that bombarded her. Hanta used his tapes to tie the arms and legs of their enemies, allowing Class 1A to attack and score points. Momo, Kyoka, and Tsuyu led Shoji as they gathered, devising stalking strategies in corners and cornering various groups of students or just individuals, leaving more than one crying out of pure rage and frustration. Just when each was just a point away from moving forward, they headed towards a particular building without Shoji noticing anything strange, like Momo eating too much or the like. Psycho-sama, set a redhead with pom-poms in her hair, closing one eye and showing a young woman with straight hair a vision of the four. Frog Kosei, multiple arms, auditory Kosei, and a Kosei that creates things. Yaoyorozu Momo, said Psycho, smiling malevolently as she sipped her tea, surrounded by visions of hundreds of words, scientific formulas, and mathematics. Well, 
my winning strategy is ready. As a group, they ascended several floors, with Shoji not noticing anything strange about Momo's small creations. They weren't there to search for other teams. The three of them were there for revenge against the fox and her minions, for what happened last time. Quickly, Kyoka and Suyu supported tiny sticker-like spheres on each of the windows, without Shoji saying anything or finding it strange. I can't spot any of our classmates from here, said Shoji, frustrated. Four people are ascending, said Kyoka, disconnecting her earlobes and sighing for not having heard rock music at full volume. She remedied it. Suyu was startled to hear unexpected music in that situation and context. What's that? She asked. Shoji leaned an ear. Music. I'm fine. But if Kyoka had heard it, even for a moment, that is, if she had connected her lobes to the wall, it would have been detrimental to her. A window shattered, and immediately the others were covered by the tiny circles they had stuck, which expanded in a second, repelling the impacts and preventing them from seeing. When the air conditioning was turned on to incapacitate Suyu, the three girls were ready. Get down. Those outside might still be there. Kyoka, send sound waves to the air conditioners, I'm on it, said Kyoka. Earphone explosion. The purple-haired girl crossed her arms in front of her and sent out the sound waves, destroying the air conditioning ducts. Not this time, darn bitches, she thought, remembering how bad Tsuyu had felt last time. They're welding the door, said Tsuyu. But it's something we expected, said Momo, taking something from her belt and throwing it at the door. They were six-letter M's that stuck like stickers or magnets before electrifying the door, accompanied by the cries of people, girls, being electrocuted. Too prepared. Something's not right in this test, Shoji's vision through the windows, the air conditioning on Tsuyu, our mobility behind the door. These girls are not just students, they're an army bordering on fanaticism, and there's a mastermind behind all of this. She took out some peanuts and put them in her mouth, creating a horn three times larger than last time. Sorry, but it took longer than expected. She dropped the headphones that stopped the sound for them, and Kyoka launched her stunning sonic attack until Momo ordered her to stop. Let's go. They opened the door, and everyone was unconscious. Momo took out her point balls and closed the door behind her, but Psycho wasn't there. Time to triumph. They all started scoring points until the crazy one appeared. Intella Psycho. My cousin, my aunt's daughter. Being Kentaro Ojisan the eldest, he inherited the majority of the Yaoyorozu fortune and doesn't have to work, growled Psycho, approaching her, furious. As if neither Kyoka, Shoji, nor even Suyu existed and they had all already marked and disqualified Psycho's teammates. My father married the daughter of the Intella family, a family with incredibly intelligent people who have created a technological empire and have advanced in various directions. But you, the Yaoyorozu. She was so distracted by her personal vendetta that Suyu wrapped her tongue around the girl's feet and pulled her, causing her chin to hit the ground, and then she flipped her. The girl looked crazed with anger at Momo. I'm going to get revenge for what you've done to my family, Yaoyorozu Momo. She sighed. I'm really sorry, Psycho Itoko, but none of that is my fault. Marking her and disqualifying her only made the lavender-haired girl even more insane. The four of them moved on to the next round. Since 100 people have reached their score, you'll have an hour to eat, and then after half an hour, we'll ask you to pay close attention to the screen, requested the organizer. When everyone finished eating, they watched the screen showing the city, with confusion and no understanding until they saw. Is the city being demolished? Momo covered her mouth, even though she thought she was now acting like a damsel by doing so and in that pose. The next phase of the exam is to test your rescue maneuvers, said Mr. Mara. As witnesses in the disaster area, you'll perform rescue maneuvers. Witnesses? Kaminari asked. They're the people who get injured in rescue areas, said Hagakure. We will test your rescue skills and if you carry them out correctly, said Mr. Mara. Disguised as injured civilians in the disaster area, people from the Auxilianos company will score you according to your expression and rescue technique. So, go ahead. And again, the roof opened, allowing the students to carry out their rescue maneuvers. The second exam began, and it quickly became clear that the classes with 13 sensei in different zones of the USJ and other training areas within UA itself, such as the Xeno Zone or the Alpha Zone, were helpful for them. My grandfather got hurt, he's under those rubble, shouted a child. Izuku focused among the rubble the child pointed to. Kyoka and Shoji confirmed that someone was indeed trapped there, and along with Ochako, they began to levitate, repel, or attract the rubble. Dark Shadow proved very useful, as did Kaminari and Aoyama, in illuminating dark places. 
Momo created supports on the riskiest buildings or walls, and the others carried out the rescue maneuvers, working as a team, which divided the points, but those assisted noted that they were very good strategies. But soon, the other students from heroism classes at other academies showed they were better prepared for this, cordoning off a provisional danger area, clearing rubble and preparing landing areas, simulating a first aid area, simulating protection areas. It's not just about giving relief to the victims, said Mara. Until the police arrive in the area, you, the heroes, must exercise authority and responsibility. Momo reinforced a couple of walls with beams, which were secured by Hanta with his tape, and then Ochako floated the rubble over the elderly man. Aoyama used his laser to illuminate a boy who created eyes and could see in the dark, while Shoji extended his arms and rescued two people amidst the rubble. Kaminari removed the less problematic rubble, and Mineta ensured the structure didn't collapse, while the boy with the electric kose pulled a woman out of the place. Kyoka notified them of where the injured were, and Mashirao used his tail to reach some wounded, while Eijiro, Suyu, or Mina took care of others, with one of them surviving if the structure collapsed and the other two being agile and flexible. It wasn't so difficult, and Yue started to rise, only for their real chance to shine to arrive. With an explosion. The henchmen of the hero gang Orca appeared, with their boss among them. Heroes. Can you fight and protect at the same time? Heroes must evacuate the wounded and fight the terrorists. This would be difficult, even for a professional. Or several, thought Aizawa. The exam. What kind of heroes are they looking for in the era without the symbol of peace? 